Hello, I'm Dr. Mike Miller, and I'm the Director of Microbiology Technical Services, which is a private consulting service for diagnostic laboratories around the country. I'm also retired from the Center for Disease Control after 35 years, and I've had a lifelong interest in specimen management and clinical relevance. Now there are a lot of references that are available for you in this regard and one has been produced by the American Society for Microbiology and there are many others that are available to you. So I want to welcome you to this most informative series of demonstrations of specimen collection for diagnostic microbiology. Respiratory viruses are the most common cause of pharyngitis in both adults and children, but we don't culture for these viruses because there's no available directed therapy for them. However, for bacterial pharyngitis, throat specimens are very common, especially during cold and flu season when group A streptococcus is often considered. If a rapid test is being done, we still need to confirm negative results with culture in children, so there may be a need for two traditional swabs or a single e-swab will suffice in these situations. Some traditional kits have a double swab included while others do not. E-swab simplifies the process, allowing the laboratory to run multiple tests from one swab. So whether it's for culture or for rapid antigen testing, the quality of the specimen is critical. A cavalier approach to taking this simple specimen is a bad idea. One must firmly sample the back of the throat and tonsil area by pressing and rotating the swab during collection. In many people, causing a gag reflex in the patient if it is done right. Better to do it correctly the first time than have to do it twice. The sensitivity of culture and of the rapid antigen test is completely dependent on the quality of the sample, so make it good. Do not touch the teeth, cheeks, gums, or tongue on the way in or out and really firmly swab the area where you can visualize the redness and the exudate. This is the swab used to sample the throat. The swab is a normal size swab for most patients. If you're using an FDA approved rapid test that specifies a particular swab, you must use that swab. Now, if you change swab types with these approved kits, the laboratory must validate that the new swab is as effective as the one recommended in the kit. If a special swab is not specified, then no validation is necessary. Specimen collection should be performed by healthcare personnel who have completed training and demonstrated competency. Always read the manufacturer's package insert for specific instruction regarding specimen collection and transport for the type of test kit being used. Those who collect the specimen should always wear personal protective equipment, including a lab coat or scrubs, a mask, such as a surgical or N95 mask, eye protection and gloves when collecting any specimen. Always remember to perform hand hygiene before and after the procedure. Explain to the patient what you are about to do. Open the swab package and remove the swab. Avoid touching the swab applicator below the molded breakpoint as this could lead to contamination and incorrect results. Firmly sample the back of the throat and tonsil area by pressing and rotating the swab during collection. Gently remove the swab from the patient. Remove the screw cap from the tube and insert the swab into the transport container all the way to the bottom of the tube. Holding the swab shaft close to the rim of the tube and keeping the tube away from the face, break the swab shaft at the pre-molded break point. Screw the cap on tightly 
to prevent leakage and dispose of the swab shaft in a regular trash receptacle. Apply patient identification label or write patient information on the tube label. Follow the standard operating procedures of transport and testing in your facility. Remove gloves and perform hand hygiene. Generally, specimens should be transported at refrigerated or room temperature and arrive at the laboratory within two hours of collection. If not tested immediately, the specimen may be held at refrigerator or room temperature for 24 to 48 hours depending on the sample type. Refer to manufacturer's package insert for specific instructions. Please note that the eSwab liquid amies fluid maintains the viability of diverse bacteria. Do not send a dry swab as this will lead to unsatisfactory results. If the tube spills its contents prior to inserting the swab, the liquid is non-toxic. Simply put the swab into another tube before sending it to the laboratory and discard the spilled tube. If the tube spills after contamination, follow procedure for blood and body fluid cleanup. Refer to your facility's infection control manual for further direction. If contaminated fluid splashes onto the person collecting the sample, treat as a blood and body fluid exposure. Refer to your facility's infection control manual for further direction.